this video, I'm going to show you how to create this image gallery from scratch. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and all of the styling and hover effects with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoy this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you'd like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project, and then I have body tags which are empty. In the CSS, I added a preprocessor of SCSS, which allows me to declare variables like this. And then I also added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero. In this video, I'm going to show you the full tutorial from beginning to end. So to get started, I'm going to jump inside of the body tags of the HTML. So to get started, first, I'm going to create a div with a class of gallery. This will hold all of the images. And within that class of gallery, I'm going to create a gallery group and a gallery group will contain the image that we want to show on the page and also all of the icons that we want to be visible on hover. So here I'm going to include a class called gallery group. And within that gallery group, I'm going to have two high level elements. The first element will be the image that the user will see. And the second item will be a container that will hold all of the icons. So first I'm going to include an image and I'm going to give it a class of gallery image. Now, the second thing I want to include is a div that will hold all of the icons. So beneath this, I'm going to add a div with a class of gallery icons. This will hold the three icons that we want to be visible in the hover state. So this is actually the basic structure for each element on the page. So I'm going to add content to it so that way we can actually see something in our document. So I already pulled an image from Unsplash. So I'm just adding that link here. And then I'm going to add the three SVGs that we're going to add to the project. So I have a heart icon, a comment icon, and a share icon. So now if we look in our document, we can see that we have an image and we have the three icons that are visible. So this is the underlying structure for the page. So now I'm just going to add other images so that way it fills up this gallery. So now we can see more images and icons on the page. So the way that I structure this is that that div class of gallery holds all the images and then every single gallery group contains the image and the icons which we will overlay and apply hover effects within the CSS. And then I just duplicated the structure multiple times and add different images. So now we can jump inside of the CSS to improve the styling. First, I'm going to add a margin of one REM and a specific background color. Next, I'm going to work on the gallery. So again, the gallery holds all of the gallery groups. So for this, I'm going to reference that class of gallery. And first, I'm going to set the display of this to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And then I'm going to set the justify content to center. Now, in order to make this responsive without any media queries at all, I'm going to set a specific value for the grid template columns. So for this, I'm going to set it to a repeat auto fit with a min max value. Now, if this is brand new to you, I have an entire video that goes over this specific topic. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. Essentially, this is saying that the grid will fit as many columns on the page, given that each gallery group can fluctuate in size between 12 REM and 0.3 FR. I want the rows to be consistent for this project, so I'm going to set the grid auto rows to 12 REM, and then I'm also going to add a grid gap of 0.5 REM. So now we can actually see the effect on the website. Then within here, I'm going to reference the gallery group. Again, that gallery group holds the image and the icons. So I'm just going to set the position of this to relative. 
Then I'm going to apply certain styling for the actual image. So I'm going to write and image. And again, the reason why I can include the and symbol and nest CSS elements is because I added a preprocessor of SCSS. So if you're just writing vanilla CSS, you just have to reference each class manually. For this image, I'm going to specify a width and height to 100%. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. And then to retain the aspect ratio, I'm going to set the object fit to cover. I'm also going to add a border radius. And in order for the images to appear interactive, I'm just going to set the cursor to pointer. Now, if I increase or decrease the window size, you can see that the page will add columns if there's enough room, which will make this design completely responsive. Next, I'm going to work on the icons. So beneath this, I'm going to write and icons. And this group holds the three icons that we want to be visible in the hover state. So for these icons, I'm going to set the position to absolute. So that way I have full control over their placement on the page. Now, because we set this parent group to a position relative, I will have full control over where these icons are placed because now I'm setting it to a position absolute. So because these are a position absolute, they are in reference to that gallery group. So if I just set the bottom to zero, that will ensure that the icons will be at the bottom of the image. We can now see the icons on the page, but we have to do quite a bit of work in terms of styling. So to improve the alignment of the icons, I'm going to set the display of it to flex with a justify content of space around. So now they're all placed horizontally. I'm also going to add a gap here of one REM. To ensure that the icons are always visible, regardless of the image that's underneath it, I'm going to add a linear gradient here that will go from a 60% black to a 0% black. So that way the icons will always be visible in the hover state. Next, I'm going to set the width of this group to 100% of the parent element. I'm going to add some padding of 0.6 REM. And initially I don't want this group to be visible at all. So I'm going to set the opacity to zero and add a specific transition effect. Next, I'm going to work on the three SVGs that are actually in that group. So for this, I'm going to write and SVG, which references the children SVG of this group. I'm going to specify the width and the fill. I also want these elements to appear interactive, so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And when these icons are in the hover state, I want it to appear as if they're actually moving onto the page. So first I'm going to set the transform to a translate Y of one REM. So that way I'm setting the default Y position of the SVG here, and then I will modify the Y position in the hover state. I'm also going to set the opacity to zero, and then I'm going to add a transition of the opacity and the transform property. The reason why I'm adding these properties here is because I want each icon to transition individually, so that's why I'm setting these particular characteristics here. Next, for the actual hover state of the icons, I'm just going to modify the fill slightly. Next, I'm going to work on the actual hover states so that way we can actually see the icons on the page. So underneath this, I'm going to say and group and then reference the hover state because I want when that entire group is in the hover state, I want to affect the icons. So here I'm going to write and group colon hover, and then I'm going to reference the icons. So when that group is in the hover state, I want to modify the opacity of those icons to one. So that way it will definitely be visible on the page. And then underneath this, I'm also going to modify the SVGs. So for these SVGs, I'm going to also set the opacity to one and also add the transform of the translate Y to zero REM. So that way it actually looks like it's moving onto the page. So let's try it out. I hover over an image and now we can actually see the icons on the page. We can see that linear gradient in the background and we can see that bit of motion. So this is looking really good. The last thing I want to do is add a bit of a transition delay. So that way all the icons don't appear at the same time. I want it to appear as if the icons are transitioning in gradually. I want the like icon to appear first, then the comment, and then the share icon. 
So there are multiple ways that you can do this. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to create a for loop using SCSS. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. But for this video, I'm just going to use the nth child. So underneath these SVGs, I'm going to write and nth child. Now, because I know exactly how many icons are visible and I'm not going to increase the number of icons later on, I'm just going to specify the exact child and its transition delay. If you're planning on achieving this effect with a lot of children elements that may grow over time, I would not recommend approaching it in this way. Because I know I'm only going to ever have three icons here, I'm just going to hard code a two for the second child and a three for the third child. But again, if this is going to be dynamic, I do not recommend approaching this in this way. So for that second child, I'm going to add a transition delay of 0.05 seconds. And for that third child, I'm just going to add a transition delay of 0.1 seconds. So again, these are really small values, but I want it to appear subtle. So now if I hover over an image, we can actually see that transition delay. So there you go. That's how I created this image gallery from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.